Well, it is official. Just what many of us thought. Jim Harbaugh officially off to the LA Chargers. I'm going to attack this from a few different angles. First, talking about Harbaugh's perspective. Why do I think he went back to the NFL finally after flirting with the league for the previous two years, taking meetings on National Signing Day? He is finally back. If you are Harbaugh, and you're looking at the Michigan situation right now. You've beaten Ohio State three straight years. They're absolutely reloading. They're cra- going to be crazy good next year. Like I said in an Ohio State video, the Death Star has awoken with the Buckeyes. And also, you're losing J.J. McCarthy. You're facing a very likely minimum multi-game suspension. Possibly not going to be coaching if you decided to stay at Michigan for that Week 2 non-conference game against Texas. That's some critical time they're losing well actually I don't want to say Michigan's losing a lot because technically they are but they're also returning a lot of good players on defense I don't want to you know on offense they are losing uh, a fair share with Blake Corum and J.J. McCarthy Uh, but either way when it comes to Harbaugh his decision it makes complete sense you leave Michigan an absolute legend nobody thought he was going to win a national title let's be honest we all thought that Michigan was a step below the talent level of the SEC top dogs, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. He beats Ohio State three straight years. So if you are Harbaugh, quit while you're ahead. Just like I said about a week ago, why is this different? Harbaugh's met with NFL teams the last three years. The reason it's different this year is because he won it all. Now he has three straight wins against Ohio State and he is facing some type of suspension. Nobody knows what the NCAA is going to do to Michigan because of the cheating scandal. You can only speculate on that because it's such an unprecedented situation. They could do nothing or they could really crush Michigan or it could be somewhere in between. We don't really know right now. Will there be sanctions? Will the sanctions be brutal? Will they be a slap on the wrist, kind of like a recruiting violation? It's all unknown. It's up in the air. What we do know is the NCAA was going to suspend Harbaugh for four games last year. They tabled it. Michigan self-imposed a three-game suspension, and the NCAA was going to come back and talk about the recruiting violations that Michigan was facing this year and possibly suspend Harbaugh even after the Michigan self-imposed three-game suspension because originally it was supposed to be a four-game suspension, and that was before any any of the cheating stuff. So Harbaugh, complete sense, absolutely. And Michigan fans can't even be mad. You know, you could make the argument, if, if I was a Michigan fan, I'd be a little bit uneasy right now with Sharon Moore. If you guys don't know Sharon Moore, the crier from the Penn State game, he filled in for Harbaugh. He won, you know, three games. He beat Ohio State. He beat Penn State. But when it comes to Michigan and them basically just appointing Uh, Sharon Moore, everyone seems to think, well, they were going to do this anyways. He's next in line. Is this like an Urban Meyer, Ryan Day situation where Ryan Day was already on the staff? And if you're Michigan, are you looking at other rosters like Alabama and saying, we need to stay in house because if we go and we get someone new, everyone's going to transfer Another little funny thing that Harbaugh did, it seems like he dragged this out uh, long enough to where a lot of the semesters are starting when it comes to the student athletes. So in terms of kids transferring from Michigan, they really wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Now, technically, there is now a 30-day window for players to transfer from Michigan to other programs, but because of the way the semesters fall they're very likely going to have to wait for spring ball. So Harbaugh doing, you know, doing right by Michigan there, forcing the kids to at least, you know, listen to Sharon more, see how it is rather than make an impulsive decision of possibly, you know, possibly transferring out. Who knows? Maybe if Alabama did that, they would be able to keep players like Caleb Downs, but I do think this is a completely different situation than Alabama. Not really, you know, not making fun of Michigan's roster, but Alabama, they had a lot higher talented or highly recruited players that had already formed relationships with other schools like Caleb Downs was recruited by Ohio State for a very long time with Michigan I know people are talking about some players like Will Johnson I don't think there's going to be an exodus from Michigan unless something crazy comes down from the NCAA and the NCAA grants players the rights to look around in the summer I think that would be the only way that would happen but if you are Michigan Sharon Moore I don't think it's a very good hire. I understand you could say, well, he beat Ohio State, he beat Penn State. 
you know, that was a little three-game stretch, you know, when it comes to that, I just think it's a light hire. And you could make the argument that, you know, Ohio State hiring Ryan Day was light too. I'll agree with you there. But there is an interesting rumor that Michigan was heavily interested in DeBoer before he went to Alabama, which makes, that lines up to me. I could see a coach like DeBoer uh, being Michigan's next next head coach. It didn't end up happening, obviously, with him going to Bama, the Bama job opening. Uh, but either way, Harbaugh back to the NFL when it comes to, I'm not even, I'm not going to analyze Harbaugh on the Chargers. This is a college football video, but yeah, the Chargers are kind of loaded, man. They got like a top six pick. They've got a top I don't know, six or seven quarterback, Justin Herbert. Some people think he's a top five QB. They've got a very talented defense. It'll be interesting to see what Harbaugh does with the Chargers. He has had significant success in the NFL already. And certainly if you are Ohio State, if you are Penn State, if you are a new member of the Big Ten that's going to be competing for Big Ten titles like a USC or an Oregon, this is great news. Let's just call it what it is. Jim, this is great news. Let's call it what it is. Jim Harbaugh is, whether or not you want to say, oh, it's cheating, whatever, the guy's an elite college football coach. He's just an elite coach in general, so anytime a rival loses an elite coach, it is good news, and Jim Harbaugh beating Ohio State three straight times. Again, I know there's a lot of animosity, there's a lot of, oh, he cheated, this, that, and the other, but, uh, you know, Michigan did build a very solid program that was almost, it's like, they were able to win without having the talent because they built in the trenches and they had amazing coaching. Again, we'll see if any of that gets vacated. Uh, you know, I tend to think it probably won't, but it's just very hard for me to speculate on something like that. And now if you are Michigan, I just, I, when I look at Sharon Moore, I think it's a probably around a three or a four year, uh, you know, time and, and then he's gone. That, that's my opinion of Sharon Moore. And I know people say, well, again, he beat Ohio State, he beat Mich he beat uh, Penn State, I just don't see it with him. I, I don't think he's a head coach material, especially at a university like Michigan. And I think the narrative surrounding him will be, well, you know, Harbaugh left late. Michigan had no one else available. They were facing sanctions. That wasn't really an attractive job at the time. And in three or four years, if he suffer, suffers losses to Ohio State, possibly teams like Oregon. Remember, Michigan's schedule next year, it is very hard, and they are breaking in a new quarterback. I'm not exactly sure who their new quarterback is going to be. I would imagine in this day and age, Michigan will be very aggressive in the spring transfer portal to look for their future starting quarterback. I do not believe their future starting quarterback is on their roster. They have that backup dual threat, but apparently he's not a great thrower of the football. They've also got a true freshman coming in who's decently ranked, but can you really rely on a true freshman? I don't think so, especially in, in the Big Ten and, and how tough it's gotten, and, and Michigan's schedule in 2024 is very challenging. I think they're going to snatch someone from the portal, so it's hard for me to analyze how good Michigan's going to be next year right now. Uh, but we will see. Either way, Jim Harbaugh is gone. Nobody is surprised. And if you are Harbaugh, it's the best of both worlds. You're not getting punished by the NCAA. You get out of Dodge and you leave as a national champion. And if you are programs like Ohio State, Penn State, you're very happy about this situation. Anytime your rival loses, you know, their head coach, especially an elite head coach, it is a good thing because it's going to set the program back. But I do not think there's going to be a situation where, I mean, to be honest, there really wasn't even a mass, a max exodus at Alabama. I mean, sure, they lost some players, don't get me wrong, but based on how talented that Alabama roster is, they're still top three, maybe top four in terms of overall roster talent in college football, even with the losses, and they were already able to recoup, recoup some players. I saw a five-star receiver who had reclassified, recommitted to Alabama, so with Michigan, it's just going to come down to keeping the big dogs, keeping, you know, Colston Loveland, keeping Will Johnson. I would imagine they would keep Mason Graham considering, uh, you know, he announced he was returning to school and returning to Michigan. Uh, but either way, we will see. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.